And hello to you, and welcome to the Richard Nichols Podcast, the personal development podcast series that's here to help inspire, educate, and motivate you to be the best you can be. I'm psychotherapist Richard Nichols, and this is episode 160. It's titled Anything is Better Than Nothing, and if you're ready, we'll start the show. First off, folks, I want to quickly mention that I've been thinking about the format of this podcast and whether I'm giving you what you want. I know you must like what I do to a degree. I'm almost always in the UK top 20 and often sneak into the top 10, so I know that people are listening, but is it what you want? Now, this is probably prompted by some of these um, emails I get from publicists asking me if I'd like a guest on the show. And maybe someone's got a um, a personal development book out or something and they'd, they'd like to share their stuff with you. And I've always politely told them that I don't have guests on my show, but I'd be in touch if that ever changed. So I thought I'd put the ball in your court. After all, it's it's you I do this for. So I've added a little suggestion form to the website. If you go to motivateyourself.co.uk, there's a single line form to submit that just asks one question. Would you like some guests on the podcast from time to time? It's anonymous, so I'm not doing it to collect your email address so that I can spam you with ideas of buying my hypnosis downloads, although you're very welcome to, go for it. But I'm genuinely interested in whether the format of the podcast is what you want, so please let me know. Anyway, on with the show. I almost called the episode Enough is Enough, but it sounded a bit ambiguous, as if the episode was going to be a, a rant about something. But the general gist of what I want to get across today is that if there's something you want to achieve that you know is going to take a while and has many steps, like getting fitter, writing a dissertation, eating an elephant, sometimes doing enough is enough. We can be really hard on ourselves for not putting in much effort, and I get it. It's likely that sometimes you could have done more to help you move to where you want to be. But if you did something, then it's better than nothing. I was talking to a journalist recently for an article in a magazine about women not coping well with going grey, and a phrase cropped up that I tend to use a a lot in loads of different situations, and it was this. We shouldn't be comparing someone else's best with our worst. And there are personal trainers all over Instagram who are super fit, and they're advertising their business by showing people how to do certain exercises to get fitter themselves. And clients will sometimes say to me that rather than being inspired by Joe Wicks or whoever, um, even Tom Daly, the diver, has a YouTube channel where he gives advice on exercises. And rather than being inspired by them, it's too easy to look at what they've achieved themselves and think, well, what's the point in trying? I can never look like that. Well, No, probably not. And I'll go as far as to say that almost 100% of anyone who is unfit and either overweight or underweight is not going to look like Tom Daly or Joe Wicks if they follow their exercises. Tom Daly is literally an Olympian. And Joe Wicks did not get that six-pack from doing star jumps and burpees. You know, there's, um, there's two personal trainers. Actually, I'll probably follow a few, but there's two that jump out at me. There's a couple of... Um, these fitness people that I follow on Instagram. One is a lady called Anoni Forbat. She sometimes calls herself the Tiny Tank, and she has a podcast called Adulting. She'll post these typical Instagrammy stuff, you know, oh, look, here's my healthy lunch. Here's me at the beach. Oh, look, time for a gin and tonic. All ordinary, ordinary sort of Instagram stuff. And she's a very healthy shape and size. And then she'll put up a video of her deadlifting weights doing 30 or 40 tricep dips, bicep curls and inclined dumbbell chest flies. And you go, whoa, that's that's tough. That's hard work. And yet, if you're going to live like that for an hour per day, you are going to look like a pumped up Sarah Connor, all right. But like I say, close to 100% of people who want to make some changes to their fitness levels aren't going to achieve that. And that's okay. There's another guy I follow on Instagram, a guy called Adam Berry, the gym starter. He has a podcast called The Fit Stop Pod. I was a guest on it in February. Check it out. He's a really nice guy. He's a personal trainer. He's fit, really fit. But he doesn't need to look like Joe Wicks to run the London Marathon like he, he did in April, finishing in five and a half hours. 
He had heart surgery as a kid because of pulmonary stenosis. And he's happy to show you all his scars. And I, it fascinates me because I, it, can you imagine the, the fear of knowing that because he'd had a, he's got a heart condition and seeing the reminders on his body every day growing up, that could easily prevent him from pushing himself at all. And if he'd let that hold him back, he wouldn't have run the marathon, would he? He wouldn't be super fit. And he wouldn't be working as a personal trainer with a story to tell about his journey. Doing enough is enough. Doing anything is better than nothing. And this isn't just about physical health, this is about everything. Clients come to me because they feel unable to move away from something that they are doing or move towards something that they're not. We need to know that any movement is better than no movement. If someone has severe depression, and it's not unusual for them to be in bed all weekend, to feel unable to leave the room, they can't only have the goal of being the the happy, clappy, isn't the world a wonderful, great, yay sort of character. That's unrealistic. If that's their goal, then they won't even notice any improvement that they do make because they're still not who they feel that they should be. And it's okay in that situation to set a small goal of simply, I don't know, making a cup of tea. Or maybe even that's a step too far. Fine, that's okay. Don't add more stress to your life by telling yourself how crap you are because you couldn't even make a cup of tea. Our brains are complex, frighteningly complicated. We we hardly understand any of it. In fact, the more that we learn about it, the more we discover that there's more yet to learn. And if neurons in the brain are misfiring, If our mind is foggy and dulled by anxiety and depression, it's okay to shift our goalposts or even turn them down for a bit and just play it by ear. Maybe the issue with it is patience that we... No. No, it's not. Not really. That might be a part of it. But I think a bigger issue is self-respect. Yeah. If we can accept that something is hard for us, even if it is something that could be easy to someone else... It's hard to you, and that's okay. And because it's hard, it's going to take you a while. But whatever you do that moves you towards where you want to be is a step in the right direction, even if it sometimes looks as if you're moving backwards. It's like it's like football. I didn't mean to bring football up into the podcast. I'm I'm not a fan. (laughs) I've said it before, but of course it was a it was a bit different. This tournament, wasn't it, last month? Even non-football fans were watching England with one eye hoping that they'd do well. Even if they said they didn't care. And I totally understand that. I was quite emotional about them getting through to the semi-finals. I guess this is the uh, this is the tangent for today's episode, clearly, because this was weird to me. Genuinely strange. I'm not interested in football. So why am I emotional about seeing England going through to the semis? It was because, just because I don't care doesn't mean I'm ignorant to those that do. The millions of fans up and down the country that are so passionate about it. The 12-year-old kids who are sitting on the edge of their seat and jumping up with tears in their eyes. I can't ignore that. It's maybe the same reason why my wife was watching the royal wedding the other month, when she isn't in the slightest bit interested in the royal family. But even 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 despite her you know complete lack of interest, when my son tried to turn it off because he wanted to watch... I know, Taskmaster or something like that. She stopped him. And I think that even if we might think of ourselves as as private or introverted or just not interested in other people, which is basically my wife there, we're drawn towards that need for inclusion. Quite a lot of what you might think of as evolutionary psychology is misquoted and exaggerated. But it's true that if natural selection favours something, it often explains a lot of Uh, modern desires and needs. And that includes wanting other people to be happy. And it's probably the reason why we've developed empathy over these last half a million years or more. So as for needing to be okay with taking things one step at a time in order to get somewhere, and this is why football popped into my head. Watching the quarterfinals, my wife was frustrated that players were passing the ball in the wrong direction. Instead of always passing forwards, Sometimes they pass to another player slightly behind them in order to try and advance. Now, my wife doesn't like watching much sport because she gets frustrated. She can be a bit of a control freak. And of course, we can't influence the ball or the players. And that mismatch in the brain between expectation and experience causes 
an emotional response. It happens to us all. And if you don't like that feeling, then you need to accept that just because this is what I'd like to see happen in the next two seconds doesn't mean it will. And just watch it without any expectation. Because when it comes to being fair to ourselves, sometimes we do have to take a step backwards in order to ultimately be moving in the right direction. In most situations in life, whether that's decorating your house, revising for an exam or overcoming anxiety and depression, there is usually more that could be done to move you further ahead. But that doesn't mean you have to do more. Sometimes just doing enough is actually enough because anything is better than nothing. I'll ask my clients sometimes, what has happened since I saw you last that brings you closer to your goal? Because people will see me for all sorts of reasons, you see, and some of them do have goals that require specific steps, you know, losing weight, finding a new job. But if they tell me that they've done nothing since I saw them last, we look a little closer. And many times they're doing plenty. They just don't recognise it because it didn't come with any sense of achievement, but they still worked towards their goal. And we're all guilty of it, I think. I this happened to me last week. I, I picked my son up from school just because they've, they've recently finished and one of, one of his last days at school, I picked him up because he was finishing at a different time. And we were just chatting on the way home. I asked him about his day and he asked me about mine and he must have said something like, so what have you done today? And I've been working from home. I'd had one online client, which was an hour, and then nothing else. But I hadn't stopped. I ate lunch in front of my computer and I didn't really have a break from whatever the heck I'd done. But there was nothing to show for it. And I said, oh, apart from one client, I think I just spent the day fannying around. Which I've discovered is not a phrase you want to use with a 13-year-old boy who's trying to drink from a water bottle in the passenger seat of your car. But anyway, sometimes we don't have anything to show for our efforts. Sometimes we've done what looks like the very minimum, but feels like the best we could do. And you know, that's okay. Even in relationships, people will sometimes feel as if their relationship is stagnating because they don't see love from their partner or respect or attention or whatever. And sometimes those things are there. It's just for whatever reason you've stopped seeing them. Familiarity, maybe. But any respect is better than no respect. Any love is better than no love, providing it's a healthy relationship. Any date night is better than no date night, even if it is just a pint and a packet of crisps because you've only got a child minder for an hour. It's better than nothing. It's the same with our finances. Be grateful for what you do have. Even if your goal is to be earning more, what you have is still better than nothing. Especially here in the UK, it might sometimes look as if the country is falling apart, but we're still one of the wealthiest countries in the world. Yes, people have to use food banks because the system needs fixing, but the fact that we have people with enough spare cash to help fund those food banks means we're doing all right on the whole. And for every packet of sanitary towels that you take to the food bank, because we often forget about things like that, and believe me, that would be appreciated, you can make a difference. Not a massive difference, maybe just a drop in the ocean. But anything is better than nothing. Look, it's time to finish off, folks. In between now and next time, please do keep in touch. I'm on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook, and links are in the show notes. Feel free to follow me and watch my crazy antics. So crazy. Wow. You'll not realise I'm the same guy. Last month I went to the zoo. Things got so crazy. Watched some people talk about the conservation of apes and monkeys and drank some wine. It was crazy times. Crazy times. So yeah, follow that. I'm exaggerating. I, I do post fairly interesting things as well. I, I hope I do anyway. But anyway, we, we can all chat that way, which is nice. So sure, follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram and we can all spread the word about a happy attitude to life. See you next time, folks. Bye bye.